After the accident that caused $25,000 worth of damage to our camper, you told us that we should go to RV driving school. So we did. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you definitely have to push past fear driving some of these campers, these motorhomes, fifth wheels. We've got a 35 foot fifth wheel. It can be scary. We've gotten ourselves into a pickle <laughs> with a time or two and even did some damage to our camper. So this yep. video is about RV driving school and how it can help you and how it's helped us so much. Yeah, I mean, I was a, I had my CDL for a number of years and uh, I let it go because I just wasn't using it anymore. So I was a little rusty. My skill sets had deteriorated somewhat and it showed up in a pretty awful way. <laughs> well, you know, doing RV driving school wasn't even on our radar. And it was actually you guys telling us um, we'd had a couple incidences, one that cost us $25,000 worth of damage. And I'll put a link to the video here. We had a little incident at a gas station. And we really, you know, we weren't really super open to going to school until we talked to Joan and David, right? Yeah, we met a couple and uh, hung out with them for a couple days and, and they told us that they had just done this driving school and the more we talked to them, the more we thought, you know, that's not a bad idea. There are many reasons to go to driving school, so don't wait <laughs> until you mess up your camper. The RV driving school that we're talking about is actually called RV driving school, and they are the only school in the, that is nationwide. Yes, that's an important point. They have about 100 instructors, and um, what we really liked about them is they customize. No matter what you want, they customize. So I made a list of reasons why you might want to go. Um, and I think the number one, no matter what, is if driving your rig is stressful at any time. I mean, it's, it's a big responsibility. You've got a lot of weight pushing you down the road, and, and you've got to just keep all of that in mind when, when you're towing one of these behemoths. Taking the school definitely, I can see in you, definitely reduce the stress. Yes. It doesn't mean you're going to be laying back just, oh, it's not a big deal. You're still going to be broad-eyed and bushy-tailed, as you should be, yeah. driving one of these. But what was happening with Paul was the stress was, was, was actually running the show, and it was actually hurting, hurting your ability to drive safely, I think. You were right. getting stressed out. Right. The more you can reduce that stress, the better off you're going to be, and the people around you are going to be. So we know there's a lot of newbies out there driving these things. Somebody said that sales of, of RVs went up 600%. What's the word I'm looking there's for? There's no shame. There's no shame in, in learning how to drive one of these things before you get behind the wheel. You know, as soon as you take delivery of it, getting setting up a class so that you'll know how to drive this thing safely. That is such a great point because I actually wrecked a, a tow behind travel trailer. You know, you can buy one of these things and drive down the road and no one's going to stop you. No one's going to say, hey, you don't know how to drive it. You don't understand the ins and outs of, say, driving down a hill or around curves and stuff like that. And I wish there was. I wish there was a some kind of driver's license you had to get before getting behind the wheel of a towable or even a Class A. Yeah, in most cases, you don't need any kind of, you don't need a CDL to drive one of these things unless... I think some states required over 22,000 gross. Tell us in the comments what that number is. But in most cases, anybody could go out and buy a, a one-ton truck and a 35-foot fifth wheel and be out on the highway in it with, with no special training. Yeah, not a good idea at all. Let's get into the, into the class itself. It was a two-day course. Four um, hours each day. Max Cook was our instructor. What a great guy. Max made us feel really comfortable from the start. He wasn't yeah. like, okay, let's go drive. He actually sat down and talked with us. Yeah, and sat here on the sofa and, and discussed what we were going to do and, and how we were going to go about it. And, and uh, yeah, all the 
we kind of knew before we even got behind the wheel what was going to happen. Right, and we got comfortable with Max, so it wasn't like, hi, here you go, let's go drive. So Max took us around the big ring road a couple times in Nashville, in Nashville. and yeah. changing lanes and changing lanes and, and dealing with, you know, kind of more congested traffic. You always know when you're getting close to a city because the drivers start to be much more aggressive. You know, people will, will stop and wait for you out in the country where people in the city, pff, they'll run you over. Right. Yeah, it's a big difference. I don't like metro driving because, yeah, they're always in too much of a hurry and not realizing we're a big rig. We can't stop on a dime. And I would suggest that you do this course near a metro area just so you can get that. At some point, you're going to drive the, your rig in a metro area. And it can be really challenging. One of the things that I learned was setting up the trailer brake. I had mine set up incorrectly, didn't know it. We were having an issue with if you stopped a pretty hard stop, the truck would just get into this boom, 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 boom. That turns out was a result of me having the trailer gain so high. But as soon as I turned the brake gain down, that went away. Mostly on day two was all about backing. We did, we set up a situation, so we did a 90 degree backing. Uh, typically what you see at a campground is a diagonal, like a 45 degree backing. So we set up some mm -hmm. cones for that. Mm -hmm. And he was really helpful in figuring that out. Right. Yeah, and yep. learning which way to turn the steering wheel and for how long. Each rig has its own sort of characteristics, like the delay when you're backing, yeah. the delayed response, and we learned that for our rig. Yeah, that to that point, I, I started out in a bumper pull trailer. They react quicker than a fifth wheel, and that takes some getting used to. An easy way for me when I'm backing is I put one hand up here and one hand down here. This hand tells me which way the trailer is moving. If I'm moving the, the steering wheel to counterclockwise, I know the trailer is going to my right. What I'm trying to say is this hand tells you which way the trailer is going to move. The bottom. I'm sure you've heard that too. If you have any tips on the steering, let us know. One thing that Max told us was just turn towards trouble. Just yeah. turn towards trouble. Yeah, if your trailer is heading for trouble, turn the wheel to in that direction and the trailer will move away from it. The best thing about the course is you set the curriculum. You say, look, I just want to do backing or I want to do safety. Safety is a huge one. Do you know what to do in a blowout? If your blowout on your front front axle goes, you know, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, those are good. Or what safety equipment do you need? One important point to make is a lot of couples don't drive equally. Now we do, I do about a third to a half of what Paul does. And there's plenty of couples out there where usually it's the woman who does not drive at all. The course can still be beneficial because you, as the co-pilot, need to know exactly how to help the pilot. So where there's some learning there and they have the course set up so that you can add on as the co-pilot and learn your role better and communicate better because often there's friction between the pilot and co-pilot. And so that's helpful. So that's Point one, and then point two, and Paul and I believe so strongly in this, is that everyone needs to know how to drive the rig because you don't want to learn in an emergency. You just never know when something, when an emergency is going to happen, when one of you is going to go in the hospital. If it's the main driver that goes in the hospital and you can't drive, then what? Yeah, so we've heard a lot of stories actually from the owners of RV Driving School telling us about, you know, they'd get these emergency calls. The wife is outside of the hospital sitting in the Class A and, and says, I don't even know how to start it, but my husband has been told he can't drive and I've got to take this somewhere. It's okay if, if one of you does the lion's share, you know, 98% of the driving, but the person that is, that is not the, the normal driver still needs to have their skills honed a little bit because you lose them over time. So I noticed that with my backing skills, which were never that great. But when Paul came in the picture, he just did all the backing. It actually would stress him when I would do it because I needed a lot more time. And Still I was, does. Yeah, it <laughs> still stresses you. Well, actually, no, because this after we took the course. You nailed it. She blindsided into a spot. Wow. First stop after yeah, the class, yeah. I said, I'm going to back, and I yep. got it right in. Yep. And I am going to keep pushing past fear and make sure that I back on a regular basis because it is a skill that you know that that needs yeah. to be needs to be honed and, and worked on all the time and this so. was even with some jerk at the campground <laughs> who 
<laughs> who, saw, like, who saw that it was a, a woman backing in, and he didn't like what he saw. It was perfectly fine. She didn't have to correct. But he yelled, hey! You know, yeah. and, and it's like, we got it. We got yeah. it. We know. Well, what I liked about our course that helped so much, I think, was that typically when we're backing, it's stressful. Even when Paul's backing, I'm way in the back. And even though we have our cell phones or walkie-talkies, you know, I'm, I'm talking to him. But it just didn't feel as good as how Max had us. He said for our situation, it was better for us to talk on the side of, of the yeah. vehicle. We can watch yeah. the cab and make sure that the nose of the fifth wheel isn't gonna touch the cab. Yeah. I mean, obviously you know the site you're backing into and you know you should know what's back there. For the lion's share of the backing, you're standing next to the driver's door talking to him. That was for our setup. I mean, yep. it might be different for your setup, but for our setup, and we both like that. Somehow it took the stress from up here and brought it way down here. It's like, oh, it's so much nicer being able to not have to, you know, there's a delay with a cell phone. Right. Being right next to him when he's backing or him being right next to me, mm -hmm. that was a huge, it, was, it made a huge difference. It did. If backing is a problem, if you're, I can't do anything any sites that back in, if you're telling yourself that, or I can't go down this road in case I have to back, school can really help with that. It is a learned skill. I mean, it takes practice. If you've never done it before, you're not going to get in a truck with a trailer and back it perfectly the first time or the tenth time. It just takes time. Or if there's so much friction between the pilot and the co-pilot that that's getting in the way of safety or or if it's just becoming it's taking the fun out of RV life that's mm -hmm. another reason to another one is managing the rig when you don't have a lot of room to maneuver you know in a parking lot one of my big fears is turning into a parking lot and finding out after you've made the turn in that oh no there's no room to maneuver in here no way out. <laughs> no way out, yeah. And we've all heard the stories of having to back a rig out of a dead-end street. You know, mm -hmm. I think you told me one where somebody had to back out like a, a half a mile. They got to a dead end and there was no place to turn around. It took them over an hour because there was so much traffic coming in that they didn't have enough space to back Imagine out. Imagine the stress in that. You know, if it's become, if that stress has become too much to where you dread travel days, where it becomes larger than life, which actually was happening with, with, happening with Paul. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it was PTSD from <laughs> from the accident. Yeah. And let me just to to any of you haters out there that that are gonna say, oh, you shouldn't be making fun of PTSD. I have PTSD from Vietnam, so take that. <laughs> don't yeah don't give us any don't any, give me any crap about that don't mess with a vietnam veteran let me just tell you that so we try to keep our product videos down to a bare minimum but this one we felt is just too important not to do it we're super happy with rv driving school so we've tried them out we love them and they have been generous enough to offer you 10 percent off so if you're interested, absolutely use our special link. It's a limited time only. Now there is an add-on that you can take. If you are brand new to RV life or you've got a brand new rig, maybe you've only been driving travel trailers and now you've got a class A, they have an add-on that's a three hour know your rig. It's like an orientation mm -hmm. and they'll go through everything inside your rig and give you a full tour and help you understand it more. Yeah, the dealers, <laughs> The dealers, you know, they used to do that. They used to do that, but now they just throw you the keys and say, have fun. And then Max had an add on that you might be interested in. Talk about that. Besides his RV driving school um, stuff, he has a RV repair business. And as part of that, he will do oil um, analysis of, on, your, on your rig. Um, in our case, we only have one vehicle with oil. So the truck, we took the, he took a sample of the oil. Yeah, it's like having a blood test for your yeah. vehicle. Yeah. And I, and I was like, we got to get that done just to know, you know, if there's some problem. Are we have over 100,000 miles yeah. on it'll our... It'll tell you if you've got a leaky head gasket. It'll mm -hmm. tell you if a bearing is starting to, to come apart inside the engine. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot from an oil analysis, and it's relatively in, inexpensive. I think it's 100 and... 
$150. And you'll get a full report. And he did, he took a sample of the oil and what else? Coolant. And the coolant. So the two lifebloods of an engine <laughs> are the uh, oil and coolant. He had both of them analyzed and, and we're in good shape. But it was, it was relieving for me because the truck does have 100 and I think as we're doing this, it has around 113,000 miles on it, but it's just peace of mind. What are your biggest challenges when driving the camper? Let us know in the comments. You need to go to husband training school.